The first rain started to fall on June 20th, 2013. By the time the alarms had been sounded a day later, the people of High River were already knee deep in one of the worst natural disasters in Canadian history. The region was pummeled, half a year's worth of rain in less than 48 hours. The storm caused the nearby Highwood River to burst its banks. From historic Main Street to neighborhoods as far as two kilometers away from the river, floodwaters rampaged through the town. At one point surrounding the community of 13,000, enough water to fill 3,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. There is no doubt that infrastructure is being impacted, the people's homes are being impacted, and the Alberta Emergency Management Agency is fully engaged in coordinating the work of government actions to support local communities and local decision-making. 32 communities across southern Alberta were rocked by torrential waters. Rail lines were twisted. Entire parking lots of pickup trucks and school buses were submerged. Tens of thousands of homes were damaged or destroyed. Yet no place suffered more than High River. What you don't understand is we don't have a flood. We have a disaster. This is a major disaster we're dealing with. This was something that was completely uh, out of our control, unexpected. When the flood began, members of Canada's military rushed to High River, helping the relief efforts. Four days after the flood started, they announced all 5,000 buildings were clear. The search and rescue was finished. No more threat to life or limb. <laughs> Like so many Albertans, the people of High River were forced to leave their homes behind because of the rising flood. But unlike the others, there was no answer to when they could return or what they would be returning to. We were depending on, on our government and our police to protect us. And that is what you said you were doing by keeping us out of the town. It's also important for us to get the business community going so that when you get there and you're looking for repairs to your home, you have a hardware store that's open. You have a grocery store that's got food on it. You've got a drug store that's we open can go for to your medical for supplies. It's only a little ways away. We don't things, need all that stuff. All but by booting in our doors and taking our things, you made us feel less safe. And in, in fact, you also made us, um, in effect, less safe. Hey, you're not in charge anymore. Where the hell is disaster services? By the eighth day, most of the waters had receded from High River, yet swarms of Mounties were still arriving with barricades, spike belts, and a disturbing message. There is a lot of frustration in High River. It came to a head yesterday as word spread among High River residents. The RCMP had seized hundreds of guns from evacuated homes. Yeah, this morning we are in front of the RCMP Southern Alberta headquarters. Uh, looking for more answers regarding the seizure of firearms in High River. Yes, I can confirm it. And now they told us they've gone into some homes a third time and they're going there specifically to search and seize weapons and ammunition. RCMP officers stunningly revealed that they were entering homes, some more than once, kicking down doors, smashing windows, and seizing firearms. We had guns in a safe that my husband brought up. The two that didn't work he left on the stairs and those were taken. The ones that did work, and I don't know how many he had, he put, he's, but they re were registered at one point, took up to our bedroom, in our closet, behind some clothes, behind a guitar. Those were not just standing around. The RCMP initially claimed it was acting without orders. But according to documents obtained by Sun News, the RCMP now claim they were acting to keep the peace, removing only illegally stored firearms, acting, or so they now say, with the full power of the law, even though they were acting without warrants. Many people in High River believe what the RCMP did was anything but legal. I was told these searches were reasonable, but my home was in a non-affected flood area, didn't have any water, didn't lose power or water service the whole time, but yet they kicked in my door to the point where it was laying on the floor, couldn't even be re-secured. So my house was left open for looters, for the elements, for animals or anything. Could this be right? Could our laws allow the RCMP to take complete control under a state of emergency? No. Yet some officials claim that the RCMP was justified in what it did. 
I did a press conference uh, in High River uh, where I announced why people couldn't go back into the town. I talked about all the risks associated with the health risks, the phys physical risks to people. Uh, and immediately following that, I had an individual come up to me uh, behind the cameras afterwards and say there will be civil disobedience if you don't let us back in in 24 hours. Griffith says the Mounties were within earshot of this conversation. I was in the other 29 communities, I never had one threat like that. But there was a lot of um, frustration, and, and I'm saying there's a lot of frustration, uh, but the RCMP have to take precautions, and, and I, people can say they targeted it, uh, that community. I, I think it was just a matter of making sure that there was public safety. In the name of public safety, Mounties smashed their way into more than one third of the 3,700 homes in High River, destroying private property, stomping on rights and liberties along the way. More than 600 firearms were seized, along with a quarter of a million dollars worth of ammunition. So who gave the orders? The direction. That uh, image of the RCMP has, do has done a swan dive and this did nothing to help. We have two on our street. Every door has been booted in but two. You want to guess which two? And I don't want to get this person in trouble, but when I asked him why two of my doors were booted in that weren't locked, he gave me a wry little smile and he said, Les, there's no better feeling than booting in a door. Still now, no one from the RCMP has explained why the town of High River was targeted for guns. After all, the seizure of firearms hadn't occurred in any other community affected by the flood. A report from a civilian commission investigating the Mounties was expected in October of 2013. It's more than a year later now, and still nothing. At last word, the commission says the document will be released in early 2015. Until then, the town of I River will keep waiting for justice, for trust to be restored.